<laughs> well, we welcome everybody this morning. It's good to have you with us. And um, we're going to take you know, just some instructions, and then Jamie's going to give some more instructions as well. Uh, we are going to take an offering for our local church in a moment. Uh, we will also have an opportunity at the end of the service, no matter how crazy it may get, um, to sow into Joe Moody and the Agape Freedom Fighters. Amen. But before we take an offering, uh, Jamie, my amazing and beautiful wife, oh, yeah. is going to come and give a few instructions. Jamie, if you'll come. We are going to have, there are streets, children's church because our kids they love when guests are here they like to be a part of those things so what we're doing today is we're extending nursery zero to about five years old unless you have a six-year-old that can't keep it together then you know <laughs> do what you gotta do also in the in where you, where you are using the great room which is a little bit bigger of a space than our nor normal nursery space so that they have a little bit more room, they're not crammed in on top of each other. But we're live streaming this service into that room. So if you need to have what I call parent training, because really as parents we need the training more than the children sometimes. If you need to take your child in there to kind of, you know, find your way, then you can do that and come back. It's, um, let's see, Dusty. Back here in the black shirt, he's the doorkeeper. If you're like, where's the great room? He's the doorkeeper. He's not the door, he's the doorkeeper. <laughs> He'll let you know where the great room is so that you can come and go if you need to um, with, with your children. But you are welcome to leave them there with our very competent, loving workers who will love them and, and pour into them. So you, if you want to do some more CSC, you and Stacy Joy are gonna kind of come and go. All right, so those ladies, Y'all ready? We're gonna release them to you. It's all of you. You got this. All right. They're very, very great. You will. They're so full of grace and mercy. It's crazy. Yeah. Grace and mercy for the nursery. Y'all need it, right? All right. So you I go with these guys up to five years old. And if you know, again, we won't. You know, ID you. You're a little bit older. You need to go. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're going to limit it there. Yeah, if you, if you as parents need to go back and let them get settled, that's fine too. Go right ahead. You can find your way back in here when you are comfortable. Amen. So we're going to take an offering in just a moment, our offering declaration. And um, But a couple of announcements before we do that. Uh, do remember that Wednesday night we will have our intercession time. 7.30, I said 30, 6.30, what am I thinking, right? And um, those have been really, really powerful. And I know even this past Wednesday was a really powerful night. I just have a real sense that God's really, our prayers are affecting things. So come and be a part of that. Um, also, um, two weeks from today, we will have Ian Carroll with us. And uh, Ian will be in at the, at the Four days following that, he will be doing the Emerging Apostles Intensive, and um, some of us will be there. Some of you that are here need to be there. Um, not making eye contact with anyone, um, but pray about it and uh, and just say yes. Um, so praise God. Uh, we're going to take an offering. Let's stand together. Uh, we don't pass a plate, but we just bring those you can up to the front here. The three baskets. You can give online at globalharvestchurch.co, okay? So let's make this together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God. Amen. 
and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So come and bring those <laughs> in worship and obedience. Praise God. I knew there was more on that. I just couldn't remember it, right? Hallelujah. Well, and as you're giving, I just want to um, just give a report. Jamie and I were kind of even out this week with the Oklahoma Supernatural Intensive. Um, and it was really, really powerful. And that's why Joe's able to be with us today because she was speaking this week uh, a lot with, along with many other. It's funny, we went and we didn't know anybody except the speakers. Um, but it was a really, really powerful time. And uh, I'm just really thankful for what the Lord is doing in our region, our state. And um, I just expect more to come out of those meetings. Just even some really good kingdom relationships as people and churches are really committing to work together to see the kingdom of God come. Amen. So this morning, um, I want to know most of you here uh, need no introduction to uh, Joe Moody. And um, she got miraculously healed several years ago. Uh, we were in the meeting where she got healed, but we shouldn't. We didn't know it. Um, and the voice of the apostles, and then the next year we heard her, her testimony, and we were just like, "Who is this woman?" Right? And it was so powerful what God did. And since then, God's just using her to raise up people, to train them, to take the gospel of the kingdom all over the nations. Um, I'm gonna go with her someday. I keep yes. trying to go on a trip, and it keeps yes. getting canceled. So I don't know, but. Um, so, uh, but we love Joe. This is her third time with us, I think. And last time she was here was last May, and she did our she came in and did our supernatural school graduation. And man, I got wrecked that night. That was one of the, as I said last time we were talking about it. That was one of the three top three craziest encounters I've ever had. I've had a lot, but it was really powerful. So uh, this morning, just welcome our friend Joe Moody. Kids in here? First of all, my hands are burning. Come on, you girls I love over there. Get up here. 
have to talk like that now that I'm in a room. Um, if there are any other children up here, uh, I want to introduce uh, the team that is with me. Uh, come up here, you guys. This is uh, Pastor Mike and Tiffany Shaheed from New Jersey, and they have a fellowship called Bayshore Christian Fellowship, and uh, they are awesome apostolic leaders. And, uh, I've, and this is the first time I've ever had them together with me, so I feel totally supportive, totally blessed. They were visiting family in Texas, and so Tiffany came out a little bit early and helped me in Mustang, and then Mike drove out, and uh, I'm just blessed. And Ariel and Justin Storm are part of our team, and, and they're from Eastgate, and, but they're resting, so they're receiving right now, unless the Lord hammers them. Okay. So let me just pray really quick, and then I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna have you help me pray for the kids. Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name for your word this morning. Your word that never returns void. Your word, God. This year in the Hebrew calendar, it is the symbol for mouth, and what you declare shall come to pass, says the Lord God Almighty. And this morning, Lord, we declare your glory to come down on the sun and daughters of God. And you said to me, teach them my ways that they may know my truth, that they will walk in my ways without a divided heart. But in this season, we must stay united. So I wanted to actually bless you guys. So I wanted you to turn around this way and face me so it's not, you know, everybody's not looking at you. Perhaps. Right like this, just face There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Okay, listen, uh, if there's more kids and you want to come up, all I want to do is put hands on you, and I want you guys to, don't, to pray with me. Uh, the Lord, what's that? I don't, I don't care what age you are. If you, if you have hair on your face, like Andy said, probably you shouldn't be up here. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen some 13-year-olds with hair on their face. So, yeah. Everybody who is under 20, how about that? They're all kids. Everybody under 20. Yeah, and I don't want you to hit the pulpit in case. Yeah, come up, come up. So here's the deal, you guys. Um, the Lord has really put on my heart in this season that we've got to continue to bless these kids and bless these kids so that they can, can, they can bring miracles in this season. Because whether or not they are allowed to go to school, I'm declaring this school here is open in Jesus' name. But whether or not they're allowed to physically go to school, they have to be the signs and wonders people. Because if we don't captivate the hearts, if we don't we don't let them captivate the hearts in partnership with the Holy Spirit for their friends, everybody, we're not going to see this army rising to the degree that God has called us to, and you know that. So I felt like our team was supposed to release everything we had, and uh, Justin and Ariel, if you want to come and lay hands, you can. Uh, Tom and Al, if you want to, you can. Uh, I just want to release everything. So, so guys, you know the drill because... Everything happens with your hands out. You know that. Just teasing. And God can touch you with your hands not out, but I'm doing that so we have a place to touch you. So, Father, I thank you for your healing anointing this morning. And I thank you as these kids are getting blessed this morning, Father, and getting filled, that people out there who are already healed in worship on a word that might God, they're already healed, that their bodies, they'll be able to test their bodies when these kids get blessed. I, If you have a physical ailment, a physical ailment, a physical ailment, oh. hey! And I bless you right now to see the anointing that's on these children, young people, teenagers. And I bless you to have the faith to believe that your body is healed in this moment. So I have to put this mic down so that I can bless them. Father, I thank you right now. Let your Holy Spirit come. Yeah, we're just going to wait a second. Just going to wait. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Boy, they are, you're very organized. Right there. Oh, she's so organized. You're going to teach. You're going to teach. You're going to teach. You're going to teach. Thank you, Lord, for Thank you, Lord, for this princess. She's just a girl's girl. Thank you, Lord, that she loves to dance. She loves to sing. She just loves to be a girl. And, Father, I pray that you protect her all the days of her life. And this one will be the compassionate one. Warrior, 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 
warriors of God calls you, and there it comes. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for Mia. Thank you, Lord, that she's going to solve problems that this world has had forever. Hey! Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 
be everything the Lord has for you. Thank you, Jesus. We just bless these mighty men of valor in Jesus' name. We bless them, Lord. We just declare over them that it is in your strength that they move by your authority and power. They take their land in Jesus' name. Bless you guys. You're so trying not to fall, but it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, the Lord is really refining and shaping destinies in our children in this hour, everybody. I really believe that the angelic realm is, is uh, moving upon the earth like it never has before. And I thank you, Lord, for your spirit that knows no limits. Jesus. There it is, there it is, there it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just give God all the praise. Thank you. And thank you, God, for new things being poured out and distributed to all of your children today. No matter the age, God. You're weary, cold, apathetic, discouraged, arrogant, hopeless, sick, offended. You're going to raise those. Amen. And then he said, and my fire will be on them. I've seen the fire of God continually, unprecedented ways, but it is ever increasing. And it stuns me. It sometimes scares me. What happened in Mustang happen in, well, except to the guts. I mean, it does happen. <laughs> the Lord is pouring out his spirit without measure for those who are seeking him above all else. The Lord told me that 
that he was sending an angel named Zephyrus. I don't talk to the angels. I just thank God for them because they come to help us. You know that all the passages of scripture. He sends his angels concerning you and they will lift you up with their hands so you won't even stub your toe. I like that rendition. The angel Zephyrus is being sent. Listen to this. Do you know what that name means? It means beauty in the darkest of places. I got that word on January 3rd. Beauty in the darkest of places. And then he said, I've also sent an, an angel I'm sending around the world. It's like a distribution angel. And the name is Augustus. It means exalted. To increase, to bring a great deal of respect, regardless of age, to bring up in wisdom and in character. And the name mean all those things to me, so do I. And then I heard this. I heard the word regalia over and over and over. And this word means emblems or insignia of royalty, royal power and royal privilege, but it's also a word to describe a government leader. And as I prayed, I felt that the Lord was sending that angel Augustus and that angel Zephyrus into the world at a specific time to bring about increase and a new level of respect and reverence in us for the holiness of God and what he gave us to be as a kingdom people with no limits and no boundaries, but also that there would be an increase of anointing to move in kingdom royal power to influence government. I didn't know all this stuff was going to go down. Listen, in California, we can't even sing. We can't pray. What the heck? But you can riot all you want. We got to get our eyes open. This is from the pit of hell. The glory of God is rising upon us. It's not shrinking. And these people who are so led astray, we are not to judge them. We are to ask for strategies on how to reach them. There are people, I'm not political, there are people that want to burn the United States to the ground. And rebuild it while they're sitting at home collecting their unemployment. There is no logic. And there is no God in their mind. And there is no God in their heart. And we are the light. And when the light reflects off of you, every dark thing flees. But you're not alone because the Holy Spirit is in you and the Lord has sent angels concerning you. Amen? This year... The Lord gave me very specific words. And I'm not going to teach on that, but I, I want to mention the three words because I think I have never, ever had a worldwide corporate word in my life. And when I got them, the three in a row, I just hit the floor. I said, why are you doing this to me? Because I didn't know. It was December. I knew what was coming. The three words were men, the nets, bedrock, and scout. They are so weird that I knew they were the Lord. <laughs> Listen to this, beloved brother. Mend the nets when Jesus comes upon James and John with their father Zebedee in the boat, and they are mending nets, and he says, come and follow me, and they drop their stuff, and they go after him. You think, mend the nets. Okay, I've heard all kinds of people teach on that, and it's like, Okay, get, the, get yourself right, get yourself checked. It's about forgiveness. That is one meaning of that word. But that's not the meaning that is used most often by Paul and several other writers in the New Testament. It's used 16 times in the New Testament. It has to do with this. The apostles coming along and bringing the bride of Christ back into the fullness of her destiny with no deficiency. That's what the word actually means. It's the Greek word katartizo, and that is what we are to be doing. That's what reformation is all about. 
And the word bedrock, it, I think that had, you know, that was the Flintstones when I was growing up. I don't know. But the bedrock runs under the earth, and it's a solid mass of rock for those of you who are way smarter than me. And every, my, my friend is a civil engineer, every massive building is anchored to bedrock because that's what gives it its stability. And the Lord said to me, the bedrock is the cornerstone. Look it up. Scripture after scripture. Christ is the cornerstone. Christ is the bedrock. And he said to me before all the things started shaking, anchor yourself in the bedrock and tell everybody you know to anchor themselves. Everything that needs to be shaken is going to be shaken. You don't have integrity and stability going on in your life because you're not anchored in me. Boy, you're going to be shaken right off from me. And the last one was scaffolding. And I saw the body of Christ as a living temple. And the Lord said to me, how do I build my temple? I said, on the words of the apostles and the prophets. That's what you're And he said, if you're not let into the church, then do it outside the church. Because in my area, the apostles and prophets are not let in. There's like a few little churches in our region. And it hasn't changed in the seven years since I got healed and saved. And I'm glad in my mouth all over the world. We just don't have it. And I pray like crazy that we will see a shift. But so I go around and I do it in the area. You can't. You know, it, it, even the rocks will cry out, everybody. If they won't let you speak where you work, if they won't let you pray where you, you know, get your hair done, do it anyway. But do it with respect. And do it with honor and release the fresh prophetic word and watch people turn to you in this hour. Go, can you pray for me? I don't even know what that means. Scaffolding is what is used around the building when they're repairing it. And in California, we have so many environmental laws that they put plastic all around the building. And I said, Lord, I don't like that word. If that's going to be a word for the year, because I'm going to cancel my renewal. He said, exactly. I said, I'm not liking it. Can I just give you that back? Can I give another word? Like clarity? I would like that word. That would be a better word for this year. He said, no, because I'm wrapping up my bride. And I'm allowing the nets to be mended. But first, stability has to happen. There has to be a re-anchoring in me. And then I'll unwrap it to the Lord. So in this hour right now, for some of you, I know this state's open, but, but some people, really their jobs are still impacted. They, they're unemployed. They don't know where they're going. Do not cave to frustration. The Lord is working on your behalf. don't know how you're going to pay for your next meal. Get on your knees and say, God, you know you're my father. You know what I need. Watch how he moves, people. Kingdom generosity is not optional. It's not optional. And, and he is using people who are giving away what they have. I, I can't even understand how that, you know, it's just, it's a kingdom principle. It's reaping and sowing, right? Give it and it get, and it comes back. When I quit my job, it made no sense. I went out as an itinerant. I don't take a salary. It makes no sense that our bank account has never gone down in seven years. I don't understand that. And my husband is, he's a very cerebral thinker. He's like, I don't know how that's possible, but I'm going with it. Yeah. <laughs> We are living in an unparalleled time. The news says the virus is uncontrollable, but I know who controls everything. Psalm 8615 says, but Lord, your nurturing love is tender and gentle. Right? You know the next part. The Lord's slow to get angry, yet swift to show us his faithful love. He's abounding in grace. He's abounding in truth. He tells us all we need if we ask him. I tell you, I, I have fallen into that trap, I'm sure none of you have, where I go on yesterday's manna. Especially when I'm traveling, I'm like, okay, we're good, we're good. I have two hours of sleep. Let's get out there. Let's do that. And the Lord goes, what are you doing right now? Like, I'm a 
about to, he goes, I'm not doing that. Even if it was like the best prayer in the world. And then I thought. <laughs> when you move in rhythm with the Spirit, I woke up, I felt like this morning he wants me to share with you something that I learned and I hope that it blesses you um, if you already know it and I and then I think God's focus is here. Genesis 2, if you have your Bibles, I just want you to open that real quick. Genesis 2, 4 through 15. So I just want to read this account of the Garden of Eden. There is something here that I believe is very important for this hour that we're living in. And the word says, these are the records of the heavens and the earth concerning their creation at the time that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. No shrub of the field had yet grown on the land, and no plant of the field had yet sprouted. For the Lord God had not made it rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. But water would come out of the ground and water the entire surface of the land. And then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. So notice that God brought water from the ground before he created man because man has to have water. Okay? Not just natural water, but the supernatural flow from God. All right, verse 8. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had formed. The Lord God caused to grow out of the ground every tree pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of knowledge evil. Verse 10 through 12, a river went out from Eden to water the garden. From there it divided and became the source of four rivers. The name of the first is the Pishon, which flows through the entire land of Havilah. Take note of that. Where there is gold. Havilah, where there is gold. Gold from that land is pure. Bedelium and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is the Gihon, which flows through the entire land of Cush, the name of the third river is the Tigris, which runs east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. So you get this beautiful picture of what Eden looks like, don't you? It's really interesting because you see, and I see when I read that text and meditate on it, I see Eden is flowing with water and there's no shortage. I think we're okay with that. There's four rivers in it. But... I want you to look at what the Pishon means. So in Hebrew, it means to leap forth, to spread out, and overflowing increase. That's what that word means. Okay, so keep that in your mind. And the Pishon, the overflowing increase, that river flows through the entire land of Havilah. So what was Havilah? Where there is gold. Okay, we got that? All right. But, so I don't know how many of you watched Havilah Cunnington uh, she's my friend's daughter, and that's how, I mean, everybody knows from Bethel Church up in where we are. But Havilah, I always thought, because she has blonde hair, she has a twin, Deborah, and my friends are, are just wild, they're parents. And I thought, Havilah and Deborah, Havilah must mean gold, because Deborah's all, you know, mighty Deborah. But, <laughs> so I always thought that. I always thought Havilah, where there is gold, so I never looked it up. I thought that Havilah means gold. Here's what Havilah means. To give birth out of pain. Number two. To writhe or to fall in pain or fear. Number three. To grieve. Then I had to call my friend and go, why in the heck did you name your daughter Havilah? Okay, hang on. Number four. <laughs> to be sore, to be pained, to be sorrowful. Number five. To tremble. Number six. To be wounded. Number seven to twist or whirl in a circular manner, to change your tail, right? The last one is weird. It means a stretch of mud or sandy land. Okay, you got the picture? You got all the pain and writhing and all that stuff, and then you got a stretch of sandy or muddy land. So, Havilah represents all these aspects of our fallen nature. Fear, grief, woundedness, pain, going around in circles. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. So here is Eden 
with Havilah where there is gold, and the word, the word says that, he also says that there's going to be these precious gems that come from there, and this fragrant aroma, that's what those words mean, medelium and onyx, Havilah is called gold-laden land with countless riches, but the key to that is water. So, remember the last stretch, the last uh, thing that I said in the meaning of Havilah, number eight, was a stretch of muddy land or a stretch of sand. So, it's, a, it's just interesting for your meditation and reflection that man was made of mud. Okay? What a weird thing. Fall in nature and then a stretch of mud. I'm just saying, go think on it, go meditate on it. But when you see the living water of the Pishon that says ever flowing, overflowing, increase, it flows over Havilah and begins to remove the mud so the gold will shine through, the fragrance is released, and the precious gemstones are revealed. I know that you're getting this metaphor. Life is the flow of living water. The Pishon says, What does John 7, 38 say? Believe in me so that what? Rivers of living water will burst from within you, flowing from your inmost being, just like the scripture says. By faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. So there is a discipline, and there is a practice, but there is a father makes us family. And in this hour, everybody, we cannot grow weary. We have to spend the time that we have not watching Netflix. We have to spend time. I'm not saying don't have fun. Come on. Joy that overflows. That's my motto. We've got to have time with him. It's the devil's easy target is doubt and distraction. Right? You know, pretty soon you're like three days in, you're like, oh, what happened to my prayer life? I don't know what I want to happen there. Zechariah 14.8 says, and in that day living waters will flow out of Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea, that's the Dead Sea, and half of them to the western sea, the Mediterranean. It will be in summer as well as winter. One more piece of scripture, turn to Ezekiel 47. During the time when I was in London and I was having to catch a flight home right before the borders closed, the Lord spoke to me and said, this is an Ezekiel 47, an Ezekiel 47 year, get ready, the river's rising. So let me just read one and two. In my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and there I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out through the south side of the east gateway. What's so interesting is if I was to go through that entire text, you would see that the river, it starts at the ankles and then the knees and then the hips and then it's over the head and it says that the river is filled with all kinds of fish. But the bizarre thing is, it says the fishermen line the banks of the river, and what I see in the spirit is a unified bride. All in a row, shoulder to shoulder, and what's behind them? The trees that bear fruit in every season, and the leaves are used for the healing of nations. Come on! We're not going to see a revival until we get unified, and we can't have unity until we get reformed. I have never seen, I grew up a Catholic, and I told the Lord four years ago, 
I, I'm done with my bitterness against them. Sorry. I fully repent. Send me where you want. Send me to the back. That's what I said. Next, I got all these invitations to talk to these Catholic priests. Because that's how God works. I was at Force of the Apostles this year, and I got a text from a guy that I met at their church. So I'm, I'm ministering at their church. We have fiery times there. And I was in the back of the room, and worship was going on, and it was crazy. And there was a guy in the back row, and I was like, man, our God's on that guy. So I just like to mess with people because I like laughing. So I went around and went, and he fell out, and I was like, that was really funny. And then I came back, and I was like, oh, God, you're awesome. And I was again, like, he fell in half again. I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but I like him. So he kept, he eventually just fell out, period. And I was with a couple teams, and they were laughing. And so when he got up and I finished preaching and ministering all that, he came up to me and he started talking about 100 miles an hour. His name's Jim. I got every other word because he was so lit from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, did you ever do that? It's just hilarious. And they're like, yeah. Anyway, he's just talking, talking. I'm like, he's like, this is who I am. And I'm at church. And I work for Father Jeff. And I'm like, you're a Catholic? And he goes, yes. And I was a priest and I was married, but then I went to, 9-11 as a first responder, and I fell in love with my wife, so I had to leave the church, but they, and I'm like, dude, TMI. <laughs> anyway, I just loved him. I fell in love with him. His spirit is just soaring Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And so he is the right hand of a Catholic priest in New Jersey. We're kind of in a 45 minutes from you guys, right? Oh, five minutes from you. Oh, I didn't know that. So Father Jeff uh, told me uh, when I met him that it was a congregation, if you count all the children, say a lot of children, of 20,000. That's what Father Jeff just told me on the phone. And I was thinking, he said they don't all come to church all the time, but that's who's, like, whatever their registry is. And so that's a lot of people. And uh, I, I wouldn't be able to preach in the Catholic Church because I'm uh, a woman. And we'll just leave that on the floor where it belongs. And that's okay. I don't have a fence. I, I seriously don't have a fence. Because the Lord works around those boundaries. Those little boundaries. Oh, I have a hair appointment. That just came up on my thing. That's <laughs>
And there's and here's what I do reply I get back from the former Catholic priest who helps run the, the supernatural schools. Because I don't know who to text. I text the former priest. I go, Tom, I need a favor. And he says, done. So they get there, and Father Jeff, I don't know what aisle he's running down. I have no idea who, you know, what he believes or because it's my first time I meet him. But I think, you know, if you're gonna walk into this environment, game on, you know. So he came in and I met him, he's like hundred, he's tall. He's like six eight or something. I'm like, hello. And then you know, you turn into your little Catholic girl self, and I was like, get that off of me right now. So I just said, Let me pray for you. So I start praying for him, and he just falls into the chair. And I look at Jim, and Jim was like, Jim. It started, you know, when Jim, when Jim came. So he get, Father Jeff just gets blasted. I think we had 25 or 30 of our team there, and these, these guys were there. All these people on the team saw a collar and a Catholic priest, and it's like piranhas. <laughs> they all run over. So I'm like, I'm all caught. He's like, in the chair. We have pictures of him. With his collar, you know, holding and Jim's over there like this, oh, until someone blew him up, and then he was down on the floor. And then I snuck them into the meeting, and I mean, bless Randy Clark's heart. If you don't know this man, he has been an absolute diligent spear in the hand of God to change the educational system in our seminaries, to get the Holy Spirit to be allowed to be in our seminaries. He is just, he is a man on a mission. But the thing he has is a need to unify the church. He is a reformer in these days. And so... When uh, I asked Tom, can you get, because I wouldn't text Randy, I have his number, but I wouldn't do it. And I said, can you ask Randy if he'll pray for him if I bring him into the meeting? And uh, he said, he took, he, I texted him, you can bring this Catholic priest. He said, done. And so we put Father Jeff in the line with all the students, and the students are fire anyway. They're all like, -la 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 -la. and we're all going down the, you know, reverse fire tunnel thing. And they're all going down, and Randy stops at Father Jeff, and the look in his face, was the most tender and sweet, and I was like, I mean, I'm blowing people up and I'm having fun, but then I was like, oh. just for a moment, I don't last long in that environment, you know? Oh, compassion, no. <laughs> anyway, so so I watched him and he starts prophesying over him, and he stayed with Father. I want to tell you what we need to do. That's why I'm telling you this story. He prophesies over Father Jeff for ten minutes, wow. and here's how it looks, Father Jeff. Because I suppose his hands out because he's been told to drill. Oh. And, <laughs> and Randy's got his, just one hand, and he's looking at Father Jeff, but Father Jeff's eyes are closed, and he's, you know, Randy's not that tall, and this guy's huge. And he's praying over him, and it's like, hmm. oh. and then, <laughs> and then Randy gets down on his knees, and he holds his hand and prays in his ear, and tells him who he really is. Jim is on the next to him. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and I just got a text from Jim. I just want to tell you, guys, faithfulness is just simple obedience. I didn't try to manipulate manipulate any of my friends. I just said, hey, could I ask you to bless this guy? And they said, absolutely. But it's about kingdom relationships, right? I mean, we got to do that first before we do anything else. And so in the end of all of this, Jim texts me about two weeks ago. We spoke on the phone, and he said to me, I'm in tears right now as I prophesied over him. And he he said, I just need wisdom for this thing. And I, so I prayed. And then last week, he texts me and tells me he was asked by Father Matthew, he and Father Jeff, to be this, to, to put a supernatural school for Catholics in New Jersey. Wow. Amen. Wow. What? Wow. This is the kingdom being built in this hour, and don't you want to do that, everybody? Because if we are living stones, and the apostles and the prophets are bringing the fresh word, and they're bringing the ability to be built up, that means we have to get our stuff healed. Because all I want to do is see all the ones that are younger than me, which is almost everybody now, sadly. <laughs> I want to see everybody younger than me go so much farther, faster, sooner than I ever had an opportunity. I want to see that God use me up and then take me up like Enoch so I don't have to die again. That's what I want to do. 
But I want them, I want all of you to do these great things with God. You were built for great exploits, great adventure. Christianity is not a boring thing. Gosh, can the enemy make us think it is. And when we let God move in our hearts in a new way, we take risks. If, if, if you feel like, oh, I'm not really growing, well, then you're not risking. That's what I say. Because the more terrified I am, the more God's on it. When I do it, he shows up, and then I think, what's the matter with me that I don't do that more often? Yeah. We just saw our 42nd case of fourth stage, fully metastasized, spinal cancer healed on a Zoom call. Because Jesus doesn't have any boundaries. Amen. Somebody on our team, I mean, hallelujah. Thank you, God. It's amazing. The God wasn't even a believer. How's that? But you bet he did give his life five days later when the Lord came into his room. And our team member released a word about nerve damage, seven years in a car accident. And then she says, I think it's somebody's relative. They're not even on this call. At that exact moment, listen, what did I say is the word this year, the Hebrew word for mouth? No. Boom. Declare a thing, and it will happen if it's according to the word of God and his character and his nature. Doreen, on a Zoom call, releases this word. Somebody, seven years of nerve damage, who got in an auto accident is a relative of somebody on this call, and they're going to get healed right now. That's what she said. I thought, Doreen, are you out of your mind? What did you just say right there? But you know what? Doreen has spent so much time in intimacy with the Lord. She is in such a beautiful love affair with our king that she boldly declares in so much love. I mean, people are mesmerized by that woman's eyes. When they look at her, they go, God, I can feel. And when she releases words, they happen. Because that's our father. That's our king who wants to fulfill what you have said because that's partnership with him. She says that Jim sends me a big long thing of all the healings that happened on the Catholic charismatic 185 whatever people were on that Zoom call. And our team didn't even, half of them didn't even know they were Catholic. How beautiful is that? They go, man, those people were on fire. I go, yeah, did you know they were Catholic? What? <laughs> the woman was healed of nerve damage was the mother of somebody on and when the woman got off the call, her mother called her and she said, I don't know what happened to me, but I was in the living room and some kind of fire went down my back. And she said, I'm, I don't have any pain. And the woman texted Jim, who then gives me the word, so I can tell Doreen, way to go. Keep doing that. Ah, Doreen takes people up to heaven in the airplane all the time, which is fine. You know, God help anyone that sits next to her. They're going to be in heaven in about five minutes. This is kingdom. Don't you want to do more than that? So how about you stand up? Let me pray for you. feel like I feel like the Lord right now is just a releasing an anointing for boldness it's weird it's like boldness but it's also healing so that hey we will let people be built above us and we will no longer tear them down so we can have our it's both boldness and healing.
fire to come on their hands and on the house. And on their feet. And as the presence of the Lord and the anointing, don't be in a hurry, just let it be, let it fill because he's trying to do something new for you. Come on, Lord. I see fire coming out of some of your mouths, you intercessors, you intercessors, you intercessors. Call upon the name of the Lord. Where your prayers are bringing the answer. As you are feeling this anointing, I want you to make your way forward, and I would like some people to catch if you would, and we'll get you at the very end. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We're just waiting on an increase, on an increase, on an increase. Let the Spirit of God flow. Holy. Thumbs up here, but when we touch you, just receive. It's like being an open vessel. Yeah! Hey! 